Um, well, thank you for coming, Matt. So, the, uh, the reason that I wanted to meet was to go over the actual functionality of the network, not um, you know, BYMD or anything like that. Because I have some questions, and there's been some mis misconceptions. Uh, and we had one at a school board meeting just a couple of weeks ago, where one of the school board members said, well, when somebody in BYOD says, yes, we know who they are. We know they're on the network, and we know who they are. And since then, I've asked a couple other parents, and they, they seem to think the same thing. And it's not. That's my understanding. We, we don't know who they are. So at, at the very least, I think we have a problem that maybe parents are under a false assumption that by clicking that, that agreement, something more is happening than is really happening. So what I wanted to do was just kind of go through and see what is really happening and um, what it might take to make more happen and kind of get a feel for that. Uh, particularly before we get ready to talk about BYOD, obviously that would be a huge increase on the network. So the, the first I have is these four questions that I sent to Phil and I think Phil sent them on to you. And these were some scenarios that I had that I was trying to get an answer for. And again, I'm not really looking for, I know we have policy that these students have signed that says they're not gonna do anything bad. And I know we have filters that stop them from going places. And that's really not been my concern because in talking to Barracuda and, and listening to what you had to say, I don't think we have a real filtering problem. So that's not really an issue. My problem more is knowing who's on the network and whether or not we can track that for a couple of reasons. One, if there particularly was a person that uh, was abusing the privilege, could we figure out who it was? And the other one is to identify trends, to be able to group um, individual groups to see usages. For instance, um, you know, sixth grade BYOD versus fifth grade, you know, and, and to be able to kind of look at that data and, and say, you know, okay, it's effective in sixth grade, but it's not in first grade or second grade or something like that. So those are some of the reasons that kind of brought me to this. So my first scenario was, if a student with a device that's registered to the BYOD pilot program repeatedly attempted to reach a restricted website, could the staff member determine who that student was by accessing data on the network? In other words, could the staff member log into a Barracuda or other type device in the network and identify the student? And that's, that's my question. Yeah, and I think the response that I sent to Phil and I imagine was forwarded to you was yes. So you could go back and figure out who that student was? Yes. So you are you are able to identify people when they come on the network? Yes. Okay. This is um, it's kind of a surprise to me because in prior meetings we had, the answer to this question was no that we did not separate, we did not know who was students, we did not know who was staff, we did not know who was other people on the guest network. Actually, I believe, if I recall from the other meeting, your question, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, was not, actually was, let's see, we, you were talking about separating the BYOD traffic from the Hooksit internal, you know, our business business network and can we separate that on the filter and the answer to that is no and I answered that at that board meeting and I said no and that's yeah. why I said no this is a and that, really different question well that can that, so. that discussion continued into and, and Phil was was part of that asking these yeah. questions yeah that and I think Phil if I misspoke it please correct me. I have all those right here. said <laughs> that if uh, he was in the parking lot and he got on would you be able to tell it was him and you said no. No, that was for the email question that you asked. You said if somebody sent an email from here to the police department and there was content in there that was bad or, you know. Okay, so you're saying. Oh, no, hang on a second, let me finish. Following email and tracing email is a completely different function that has more to do with our exchange server than it has, to, than it does have to do with the network in which that person is on. So that would be done through an exchange server. And I answered your question honestly. Yeah, I also followed up though to say if somebody went to an acceptable website and posted mm -hmm. a message, yeah. and you said you wouldn't be able to find that. That's right, so that's a function of that website. Now, we have an IP address and we can 
tell who that user is on our network. However, when they reach out to that website and they post a message, I don't know what kind of tracking that website externally has on it. So I can't promise you that we would be able to find that out. So, so you're, you're saying if someone attempts to hit a website, you can go on the network and figure out who that, that person is? Yes. So are we registering MAC addresses? No. Nope. And is that something you'd rather not speak about here, about how, we, how you're going to do that? <coughs> well, let me just That's ask correct. you this. Is that an easy thing to do, or is this a, a difficult time to do? Well, I think, you know, and this delves into some things that I think could compromise the, you know, infrastructure, and I don't know if I'm comfortable sharing that. I think, honestly, it's something that I share, and you know, it's my understanding that we've already had some of our topology maps posted on a public website, which is a major security issue. So we've got, we've given out the roadmap already to somebody. Now, if I sit here and I share with, you know, how we look things up or how I do an investigation, we're sort okay. of given the pieces I, to the puzzle. <laughs> so no, no, but the but the question is not how. And yeah, I already talked to David about that. that right. We're not going to talk about how. Uh, the question is, can? Yes. Well, we're not authenticating people to our network. Is that correct? Yes, we have authenticated users. We have students and teachers. Yeah, but BYOD students are not authenticated, correct? They don't log in with the username and password. So would you say they're authenticated or they're not? Non-authenticated. Okay. And now there's many variables that come into authenticated users, non-authenticated users, and that's more of a function of our file server and how our act, you know, Active Directory, Open Directory works. So you're saying you can find a non-authenticated user? Yes. And you'd be able to figure out who that person is? Yes. Okay. And, well, then I think perhaps that's something that I want to talk about in non-public. Not now, but at a school like meeting. Because uh, my information that I have received so far said that really to find out who somebody is, you need to be able to identify their device. And I know we have serial numbers for devices, but I, my, I'm under the impression we do not have MAC addresses for devices. Now, we have a server that collects that information. And again, this is getting into some things that, you know, is an area where I'm not sure if, okay. no, well, how would you like me to speak about that in front of the camera? We'll do it in a different <laughs> form. Let's, sure. let's leave it there because uh, that's fine. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll leave that there. So we have de decided to uh, discuss that if a member of the um, staff who has a username and password goes on, you can determine who they are. Yes. And you can track their traffic? Yes. Or could you? Keep going. Okay. My question, I guess, and, I, and, and from a non-technical point of view is this. And this is one of the reasons I want to ask this question. If you know that that is a staff person, and that's a staff person, and that's a staff person, and that's a staff person, why can't we separate the staff on the network, their data, from the other people? If we know who all the staff members are, aren't we in fact separating them? Can't we look at them separately from the rest of the network? Not on the URL. Somewhere else on the network? You could certainly do those kinds of things when they log on to a computer. And we know that user logged on to a computer in this room or you know, a lab machine or whatever it is. You could certainly find out what machine they logged into. And if, you're, if the concern is browsing history or something like that, websites they're visiting, we can certainly find out based on that machine that they logged into using their ID and password. However, I think the original question was about the web filter, and the answer to that was no, we can't separate it out on the web filter. Well, and actually, I was talking about the web filter or any other clients that we might have that would do that. Uh, yes, we can do that on file server. Because okay. they log in authenticated. You have no way to, to look at it as data as a group and say, here is the usage of the staff network. For sure. You can find out uh, who's accessing a certain SSID. We have the Hooksit wireless network. And if they're doing that on a wireless device, we can certainly find out. 
Well, here's why I'm confused. Okay. And, and, it, and, and Phil was describing it in the meeting. Okay. That we cannot separate the staff network from the guest network. On our filter. On the filter. Yeah, on our filter. Yeah. Which was the question. Yeah. But we can somewhere else and look at it as data. You've got a layer before that. We have a firewall, which is our wireless controller. And we apply policies to the two separate wireless networks. So we know the traffic that's hitting that wireless and the traffic that's hitting that guest wireless. So there's two different points of entry right there if they're on a wireless device. And there's certainly some data I'm sure you could well, organize here's, at that point. Here's and, and, and forgive me if I'm not asking the questions exactly correctly. Okay, I'm just trying I to mean, answer them as honestly as I can so, okay. and I, help I mean, you understand this a little bit better. I tend to focus on the Barracuda because okay. that was kind of the thing I'm the most familiar with and it's, it's most, I'm most familiar with. So I, I'm not aware of the function of some of these little devices. Okay. My, what I'm trying to attempt to find out is can we look at data trends? Can we look at data usage? in different ways. For instance, the staff, the guest network, when we're trying to determine how much bandwidth is being used, or time of day usage, or particularly where they're going. Yeah, we can run bandwidth reports. What what are the bandwidth concerns? I mean, we have a small business account through Comcast. So our bandwidth is, I mean, we have we have a lot of bandwidth below download speeds. Um, I, wasn't aware that there was any issues with that, but if that's something that we want to look at trends, we do that all the time. I get reports on that. Well, this is from why Comcast. I was yes. absolutely. I can get from I can get those either from Comcast, and we also do those in turn. But I'm trying to look at groups bandwidth, the staff versus okay. the guest net. Not sure exactly how you would do that, but I'm sure there's a way we could look into that. But we we don't readily have it available. Is what you're saying. If I run trend reports, no, I'm not running those for, on teachers versus students versus, you know, custodians versus groups. No, we, well, we don't here, run them on groups. Here, of part of the reason I'm asking this question mm -hmm. is that we are in a pilot program for BYOD, and I'm going to try not to get into whether we should be doing BYOD, but I'm trying to answer your question about why I'm interested in this. Okay. And obviously, that is increasing our bandwidth usage with BYOD. Um, I would say yes, we've seen bandwidth go up. However, it's not an issue. Well, You're not even near a point where it would become an issue given the fact that we have a small business account through Comcast. To, to, to be clear, here's my yeah. point of view. Okay. I, I'm going to have to make a decision on BYOD. Okay. I'm on the school board. I'm going to have to vote on that. So I, I would like some, to see some data. And I would like to see some data based on, okay, out of our bandwidth here, we're using this much for the school, we know that. And here is how much traffic, how much internet access we are seeing to try to get an idea of what is going on in this pilot program. You know, we, we're, we're trying to test here. So, but by just looking at the entire network, we don't know. So the more factors, the more known things we could eliminate, I understand we can't take BYOD out of guest, but the closer we can get it down, we can attribute, okay, this is the staff, and this is pretty clear that the amount of bandwidth that they're using and, and the internet. And then here's what's left. And to try to say, okay, we have put uh, three grades on in these three things, and we've got this much bandwidth, so if we're gonna go to eight grades, we're going to extrapolate that we're probably going to go to this much bandwidth. So but, you so you're just so I understand you're you're wanting a bandwidth report. Well, this is one of the reasons but the, okay. but the fundamental question Dave is 